Hey, I'm Naomi Hall, and I'm the owner of The Recovering Educator. Professionals hire me to help them get out of the overwhelm, anxiety, and stress of their lives and take back control so they can find the calm and be present in their lives and enjoy their lives again. I do that through helping them develop healthy habits and a strong foundation of stress management. So, but today, we're going to talk about self-sabotage. Do you ever self-sabotage? It happens all the time. All of us do it. You start a diet and then you eat an entire package of Oreos. You decide to start saving money and you walk into Target to get one item and you walk out $200 later. You go for a promotion. You're up for a promotion and you fail to finish the project on time. We all have done it. And the reason is our brains. Our brains are trying to keep us safe and they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Your brain is protecting your energy. Your brain is protecting the perception of others around you. Your brain is keeping you safe and alive. And new and big things can be threatening. They can be scary and they require energy and they can affect how people perceive us. See, we want to be perceived as normal, as part of the group. We don't want to be ostracized because that's not safe. You don't want to be alone. It's not safe to be alone. And so your brain is doing everything it can to keep you safe. The diet takes energy to diet, to lose weight, but it's really easy to eat the junk food, to eat the fast food. And that food gives us a dopamine hit, which our brain loves. And so we get a hit of dopamine when we start eating those Oreos. Let me tell you, I've done it. I've eaten the Oreos. Uh, we get a dopamine hit when we do retail therapy and go shopping instead of saving money. It's not really exciting to save money, right? You may have a big goal of saving money to go on a big family trip or buy a house or buy a car, but in the meantime, saving the money is not exciting. It's just sitting in there in the bank. It's just a number. Losing weight. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes effort. The Oreos, mm, they taste good right away. And you get a dopamine hit. The reason we self-sabotage also has to do with the stories in our head. <clears throat> the stories that other people have told us and the stories that we tell ourselves. I'm just not good at math. So why bother trying? You're so dumb. And we live up to these stories in our brain. Well, everyone thinks I'm dumb. So why bother trying and proving them wrong? It's it, it would be more work. It's easier to just let them assume I'm dumb. You're worthless. You've been told so many times that you're worthless. So you just live up to the story and you keep telling yourself that story. Well, everyone thinks I'm worthless. I'm worthless. I must be worthless. So I'll just eat the junk food. I'll spend the money. I'll be broke. I'll stay where I am. I, I won't get the promotion. Why bother trying? <clears throat> and it's our brain repeating the stories and fulfilling the stories. And so we have to change the stories and we have to stop listening to those voices. So how do we get out of self-sabotage? How do we successfully get healthy and fit when that takes energy? It takes changing our lifestyle. It requires effort. How do we get out of debt when it's not exciting getting out of debt? I mean, when you get to the end, it is because you're finally debt-free and you don't have that bondage, but the process can be long and tedious and kind of boring. Well, we have to break up our big goals and tasks and challenges into smaller steps. And we have to create our own dopamine hits. Losing weight, it can be very frustrating. It can be very up and down. You may have a big goal. You may want to lose 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds, but it takes a long time to get there. You don't get there overnight. So you take and you break that up into smaller chunks two pounds. You lose two pounds at a time. You work on two pounds at a time. You can hit that faster and celebrate every time you hit another two pound goal. And that gives your brain another dopamine hit. And you look for the non-scale victories. You look for, oh, I just buckled my belt one notch tighter. Oh, I didn't have to shimmy to put on this pair of jeans. I didn't have to suck in to button my pants. 
I was able to button my shirt and the buttons aren't stretching and about to pop. I was actually able to zip my jacket. I was able to walk up a flight of stairs without being out of breath. So you look for those other signs of success that help you celebrate all along the way. Getting out of debt is the same. Break it up into smaller chunks. Were you able to put 10 more dollars towards your credit card debt? And you start with the smallest credit card. It's called the snowball effect or the snowball principle. You start with the smallest credit card or the smallest loan, and you put any extra money you have towards that. So celebrate every time you put money on that debt, paying towards that, paying down that debt. $10. Hey, we just put 10 more dollars on that credit card to bring down the debt. Hey, we just paid another $10, another $10. Do it in small increments. And then you're like, we just paid off that one credit card. That bit of debt is done and celebrate. And then work on the next one and do it in small increments. Break it down into small chunks. Going for a promotion. Do you need to get another degree to earn your next promotion? Well, what's the first step you can take towards your promotion? Research schools where you can get the degree that you need. What schools have this program? What schools meet my needs? What schools can I get this degree while working full time? What schools have an online program for this? What schools, for me, it was what schools don't require my GRE scores because I was not retaking my GREs at that point. I was I was over 10 years out of college at the point that I was um, applying to doctoral programs. I wasn't taking my GREs again, and my GREs were too old to be sent. So I looked for schools that didn't require GREs. I looked for online schools. So what's one step that you can take? You know, break down whatever it is that you keep self-sabotaging yourself against and break it down into small chunks and create, it's called a T plan. I learned this from um, Dr. John Finn, who's a habit mechanic. That's his book, the habit mechanic. And um, he, it's all based on brain science and behavior. And a T plan is a tiny empowering action. What tiny empowering action can you take today towards saving for a house, getting out of debt, getting fit, getting healthy, um, Finding out what you need to do to claim money that has been lost. Um, whatever it is that you're working towards, whatever big thing you keep self-sabotaging, what is the next tiny action you can take? So I keep going back to getting fit and healthy. Could you eat one more vegetable today? One more vegetable. That's a tiny empowering action because it's a healthy action that leads towards your goal of losing 10, 15, 20, 30, however many pounds you want to lose. Can you eat one more vegetable today? Can you drink one more glass of water? Can you walk for 10 minutes at lunch? What tiny empowering action can you take when it comes to getting out of debt or getting financially stable, saving money? Can you set aside $10 today? $1. Can you set aside $1 today? to save or to pay off debt. That's a tiny empowering action. It's moving you towards your goal. It may be small, but it's an action towards your goal. And then the next thing that you need to do is track your actions and your habits because our brain loves to play games. And so I use a, a tracker that allows me to score my habits that I'm working on building. So let's say I'm working on building a habit of journaling every day. I have a tracker that and at the end of the day, I can mark it one through five. One, I didn't really do it. Five, I nailed it. Three, meh. Maybe I just kind of threw an answer down on paper as my journaling. That'd be a three. Five, I did it. I thought it out. I wrote it. I recorded it. It's done. So track it because then you can see, oh, you know what? I'm actually doing pretty good on this habit. Maybe it's walking for 10 minutes a day to help you on your health journey. Track it. Did you do it? Maybe you only did five minutes. Okay, so give yourself a three. Did you do the full 10 minutes? Give yourself a five. Did you do more? Give yourself a five plus, okay? That gives your brain those little hits of dopamine of like, hey, I'm doing it. I'm becoming successful. I'm working towards my goal. And it allows you to reevaluate too at the end of the week, looking at it like, you know what? Three out of five days, I got my 10 minute walk in. I can beat that next week. I know I can do four out of five days next week. Or I can do five out of five days next week. So you want to track 
your habit so that you can score it and see how you're doing. And even this, this will sound really strange to some of you. Give yourself stickers. Every time you do that tiny empowering action, give yourself a little sticker. Every time you drink your water goal, give yourself a little star. Get, you know, those stars we got in elementary school, the teacher had that like little strip that had like gold, blue, silver, green, red stars on it. And when you did well, they'd put a star on your paper, get some of those and track in your planner, whatever you're recording in, maybe you have a tracker for your habits. Every time you hit your water goal, hit your savings goal, whatever it is, give yourself a sticker. It seems silly, but it's so empowering to your brain to put those down and see them and see visually your success and how you're doing and your progress toward whatever that big thing is that you keep self-sabotaging. The other thing you can do to help yourself is share this with somebody else. Tell them what your goal is and what tiny steps you're taking towards it and let them know every time you are successful. My clients, I encourage them to do this every time. A lot of my clients are working on health goals and weight loss goals. And when they're struggling, I ask them, what are your non-scale victories right now? Because a scale can be hard. What are your non-scale victories? Did you walk up the flight of stairs without getting out of breath? Did you play with your grandchildren? Did you run around with them rather than sitting and watching them? Were you able to get down on the floor and back up without grunting and groaning and making noise? Uh, were you able to walk five minutes longer than you did last week? What are your non-scale victories? What are your victories that aren't necessarily related specifically to your goal, but go along with your goal? If you're saving money and you didn't necessarily put aside any more money, but you didn't buy the extra coffee at Dunk's or Starbucks or Tim Hortons or wherever it is you go, uh, did you avoid Target altogether and just not even go in there so that you, because you know, if you walk in there, you're, you're dropping $200. What did you do related to your goal that was successful and celebrate those things? And finally, give yourself grace. We all mess up now and then we all grab the cookie. We all buy something we didn't necessarily need. We all skip a workout. We all skip a vegetable, give yourself grace for those days and get back on track and record them, record them because then you can see how often they're happening and how the frequency is decreasing as you do your habit more. So those are a few tips that I have for you of how to work with self-sabotage and how to overcome it. You're overcoming your brain's desire to keep you safe and you're giving it new dopamine hits as you work towards your new goal.